today at six o'clock. Uh, we will call the uh, meeting of the Finance Committee uh, to order. Uh, if you will, first order of business will be to review the minutes from the January 17th, 23 meeting. Um, yeah, we do see that there's a, a date change there. Miss Amy's going to get that corrected. No worries at the top. That will that will reflect the January 17th, I'll make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve the minutes, seconded by Mr. Gregory. Uh, all those in favor, let it be known by stating aye. Uh, uh, aye. Any opposed by saying nay. Uh, minutes have been approved. <clears throat> uh, as we'll look here now, uh, moving into financial statements, we'll see uh, on A of our agenda uh, the trustee's cash balance statements for uh, January. So that's got us roughly through. Um, uh, one half of a year there of the budget. <clears throat> Seems to me as if the uh, cash on hand things look to be moving along decently well. I didn't see anything that jumped out particularly at me. Uh, looking at trustees trial balance there. Anything anyone wants to discuss on that page? Well, you come with, I've never seen you carrying that much money before. Uh, talking about fund balance at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, we I, we have to remember that part of that fund balance still has the uh, money on hand from the 1.6 million. Is that correct? Yes. So part of that would have the 1.6 million that's still left over in the ARPA funds in that piece. So that kind of does throw away uh, a little bit of a, a range of number in there. 1.6 million is a decent amount of that. Uh, if you will, looking at the comparison, uh, Ms. Amy's put forth here on the next piece, uh, just looking at uh, comparison from year to year, 22 to 23. <clears throat> you see your property tax intakes, uh, revenues, other revenues, I should say, and then expenses for each uh, of your uh, general funds. Like we said, we should be so that was these are as of January, so we should be roughly six months through uh, or 50% through your, your budget. Anything, Victor, anyone wants to discuss there? Things look to be in pretty similar order. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thanks. 
Which number are you looking at? Oh, the revenues? The, the expenses, 56 oh, the expenses. Yeah. We've made, we've already made some one-time payments. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was questioning, just just reminding myself there of the 151 debt, the expenses that 31 percent January last year, uh, 56 percent of this year. Uh, we paid some one-time expenses early off. We had that discussion early on that saved us a little bit to go and pay a few things off. Uh, so that was made it early in the budget. It's one reason you see that number a little high. If no uh, no questions there in the comparisons, we'll look to 101. Uh, looking on the revenue side of the 101. Any item come to anyone's attention? We need to get our eyes on. I did notice one thing we might, you know, we see the investment income 44,110, that investment income, since we know that interest rates have increased a little bit on our investment incomes, be careful there thinking that that's just fresh money because it's also going out on the other side. So let's keep that on our mind as well. They've also, those interest rates have also gone up on our, our debt pieces as well. So it's going to kind of be a, hopefully that'll be close to a watch. If nothing in the revenue side of the 101, with the expenditures in the 101. I have one question on the revenue side. The zoning studies, why is that got some out of order? Um, I can ask a question on that. You're talking about, uh, it's a uh, $1,900 on a $500 budget. It must have been a uh, uh, zoning study. I'm not really truthfully sure what exactly that entails there. But I will ask and find out that piece for us. I don't disagree, that's a large number, but fortunately it's a uh, a small budgeted item in this case. What is the 48 contribution? So 600,000 of that is the revenue loss that just hasn't transferred over from the ARPA funds yet. Um, and I believe there's the rest of it. I cannot remember off the top of my head at the moment. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so that we can get an answer for. Any other questions there inside the revenue side? Oh, <clears throat> looking through your expenditures one on one. Fortunately, they're running right at or just under. You'll notice on total, they were running at 45% of the budget of these when we set at 58. So, um, as you said there, Mr. Figure, it certainly looked to be running at a decent number. If 
that being said, moving into the 111 for revenues of urban service. Seems like our building permits are doing well there. I hope that it's continuing. It, it's running ahead of schedule as we see there. It's pretty close to on schedule, but ahead of schedule. The expenditure side of that looks really nice. Uh, we'll move ahead into 116 if there's no other questions on 111. I'd say things there that I'm seeing look pretty in good shape for this piece going forward. Uh, it's nice that our, our seems like property tax is coming in pretty well. I'm sure that office has been kind of busy this week as well. Um, getting close to the uh, end of uh, next couple of weeks, it'll be really busy, I would say, or next week or so. Hope it is anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, moving into 118 ambulance service. And if you turn the page, the breakdown of the expenses is there. Thank you. You will notice a line item that we're going to look at, line item 187, overtime pay. You might have hopefully looked ahead at your agenda and saw that that's on our agenda tonight. That is a bit of a um, large uh, percent there of the, of the piece we're looking at. Uh, I did <clears throat> look ahead, you know, our, that is a, overtime is scheduled into those workers, uh, technically 56 hours per month is scheduled into those workers. So when we look at that number, we know that overtime is gonna be paid uh, on a roughly 56 hours per employee uh, if they work their full shifts, regular shifts. That would be a regular uh, set. Uh, they get 120 hour, two week or bi weekly, and a 96 bi weekly. Uh, As we go over the budget at the end of the year, I think at the current projections, it is. It is already projected. That's what I was saying. It's already looking at above 80% uh, of its overtime budget is spent. Uh, and we are sitting at roughly, should be about 60%. Uh, so that would show us that we're looking at a very uh, heavy draw on overtime is what it appears. Remembering if there's no extra overtime from this point forward, it would still take 56 hours per employee each month. So that line item is going to be uh, Definitely get over. <clears throat> Any questions there concerning? I, I think that's definitely something that's, you know, we're looking at 20. $2,000 roughly in overtime asked for this month. We moved into overtime into our budget tonight. We're going to come to that line item in a minute. Um, but on the current projections, um, that's going to get a lot heavier. I was kind of wondering if Mr. Bailey might be here to answer some of that tonight. But, um, I apologize. I didn't ask him to come, to be honest with you.
Mr. Chairman, let me address that. I would certainly. Mr. Ba at Mr. Bailey's suggestion, he sent two of the paramedics that are doing the carrying most of the load to me to talk to me. And by looking at the numbers, I thought the problem was that maybe the supervising paramedic was kind of kind of created the sweet spot for two or three of these paramedics. But in busy with them, what I found was that you got a couple of guys that are just about burning out. And and being conscientious, they are have stretched themselves out to try to cover all the bases. And that's what runs them into sometimes four and five 24 hour shifts in a row. The maximum would have been eight, eight 24 hour shifts in a row, which is exposes the county, which exposes that person's head. Um, and so I, I kind of took a different look at that. And I've expressed to him, Mr. Bailey, the need to get some PRN. And, and I think he's working on that right now. Overtime was down a little bit this pay period, but uh, that, that's going to be addressed. Um, and he's aware of the situation. Yeah. He's well aware of that situation as we look. I know I, I came to EMS. I came to EMS the other night and um, it was mentioned that he had some employees working eight straight 24 hour shifts. It, that seemed to show that um, there must have been a, a need for those employees to be at work. We didn't have anybody else to cover. That's only happened one time, but it, it's consistently four and five. Like, not this pay period, but one before we had one, one paramedic that worked two hundred and four hours the whole time. Um, and it's, um, it's uh, got to be addressed at some point. Well, uh, the one thing I wanted just to keep aware of, yes, we're at a hard point here, but it's already hitting the budget heavy. And we're going to be looking at 56 hours per employee without them going extra overtime right now. So that line item is going to be something that's staring us down for the next few months. And the industry standard is, you know, after you work two 24 hour shifts, you're, uh, you're it's mandatory to go 12 or 24 hours. Yes. Uh, that's kind of the industry standard. And we don't have that. And I don't, I don't know if we need to have a resolution or whatever we need to do, but set some. So nothing in our personnel files that would be. Okay. And it's interesting, wage and hour laws are extremely silent on, on uh, first responders, how many hours they work, because sometimes they have to go. Um, but there needs to be some some special some guidelines to, to protect not only the employees of the county. Protect our employees for sure. You said you had those employees that are seeming burnout. We already had trouble with keeping employees there, so we don't want to. It just seems to be a, a place where it has some turnover. And he's he's mentioned, you know, he was running at half staff a year ago at this time. So that was one of the reasons we added to his budget pretty heavily uh, to the um, uh, pay rate of that budget last year. So there are some. It's been seeing a an issue. It looks like for a little bit of time here. Definitely something uh, when we're running at over 80% on, on a line item that's not a small line item, it's going to be something coming to our attention. It's good to hear that Mr. Beatty is well aware uh, of the situation. Um, whether he has a supervisor over that piece or not, he is the supervisor of this, and that, that number sort of rides on him is making sure we're covering as well, be my opinion. Oh, anything else in the NEMS? As I said, this we do have a budget, a budget resolution here in just a second or uh, that's coming our way to discuss. Budget amendment, I meant to say. <clears throat> so you do see another sheet there with uh, payroll. Mr. Ford, you ask, um, is it estimated to continue? Uh, it is certainly estimated. Uh, as of December, you'll see the estimated annual salaries there at the end are showing some employees that already made what their annual salary was going to be as of December or was projected to be for the year as of December.
I have asked around about those numbers myself a little bit, and from what I've been told, uh, that number should be somewhere on the highest topped out individuals in a EMS department. Somewhere in that 80,000 range would be a very high end number of that piece. So we can see that we're already seeing some of our highest employees at six months salary already at that piece. So lo a local area around here has, has stated. And I talked to the MS directors in, in Smith County and Summer County, and their top paramedics with the most years of experience top out of about 70 or 80. So we can see that there is a certain issue. And I, you know, I'm not putting this on the individuals that we're looking at this salary. I, I appreciate them wanting to cover uh, and make sure our county is at least covered. Uh, now it also puts a, uh, our county maybe at a, a safety issue if there were to be an issue. That's an even different question there. Um, one way to start finding a solution is to realize we've got a problem and we're realizing we've got a problem. So it's hopefully what I'm understanding is that we probably haven't, haven't uh, the that department has made a concentrated effort to expect to bring in PRN. Um, you know, you could you could offer them a couple more dollars an hour, but and that was 31. Um, I just don't think the effort's been made to, to pursue because these paramedics. You probably know we work from county to county. If they can pick up an extra 24 hour shift in another county, they will. I've been told that our benefits are not as um, competitive as other counties, but that our base salary is, is a good base salary. And so PRN temporarily could, could be used to fix this if we get the more permanent uh, You mentioned PRN. Uh, EMS, during the EMS committee the other night, it was mentioned. Uh, discussing PRN. I think Mr. Beatty spoke that PRN had not been an option for him in the past. Is that available to him then? then? That statement's not true. I'm just, I'm just, no, I'm just making it up. Didn't understand. I, I understood Mr. Beatty to make that statement the other night that PRN had not been an option for him in the past. So it is something that can be. I, I think he's not even one of the best places to put him around to cover them. Sometimes you have to be creative. That's just my point. I, Appreciate that. Uh, difficult conversations are going to come up here. They're going to, Mr. Dennis. Uh, just in addition to that, you know, the, the benefits side of the county, you um, know, the requirement to get to the Correct. That's why it would save us some money on that employee. And it's why, uh, you know, Mayor said, well, hey, what if you put an extra $2 an hour into this piece? It's not costing us on that other end of that employee. Those benefit sides are not costing us there. So there can be some savings, especially when you're paying the amount of overtime costs that you're already paying. Well, that's uh, can be a very uh, good option, it appears. It's good to hear that we're already thinking about solutions, though. Right? We've got to come up with a strong solution here. This is going to get well out of hand. Uh, we will come back to the overtime conversation here very soon. Uh, it's another piece of our budget later. Let's move to the 121 if we have no other questions. And 118. Uh, 121 is just a pass through money. So in and out, same as the 122. Uh, if you have any questions, we can certainly discuss them. But we want to move on to debt services. One fifty one. We discussed earlier some of the payoff pieces that we paid up front. You'll see there uh, the admin building pay for this month was you know for this year was paid early, puts us into places where we're setting at that fifty six percent, which looks a little higher than it did last year, thirty percent. But there were some things that we uh, made payments on early. Let's hope that interest rate continues to dive a bit. It is. It's, it is. It's showing a little bit of movement in the right direction. Let's hope it continues. 
hopefully we saw what you've done. Any questions in the 151? <clears throat> I might mention we, we talked earlier when we budgeted this amount. Remember, we budgeted on a, a interest rate that was really nice. Uh, that budget conversation happened on an interest rate somewhere close to two percent, and now we're you know we're we're seeing one reason you're seeing that budgeted amount and the actual to date piece be a little bit different there. More interest. Uh, the one thirty one highway. Any questions, any revenues or expenditures there in highway? If not, we'll move to 141. No questions on the 141? Another question was brought up about tuition a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, that tuition, as I was told or understood, um, we have some of our students who receive a tuition payment for a dual enrollment thesis, uh, if you're seeing that number there. Well, I understand it's pretty much a wash. It's an in and an out money. It's just running through that account. If no other questions there, we'll move into uh, budget amendments that we have on the agenda for tonight. Redundant phone server for the sheriff. Uh, you'll see there uh, 101 <clears throat> 12 FB, an amount of $12,180. Uh, unassigned fund balance money, data processing communication. <clears throat> To have the redundancy phone service during outages at the administrative build, administration building, a request has been made to install a redundant server at the sheriff's department. Any questions there? Any action from budget? Black group tonight. Uh, you know, it'd be not, it'd be. I would entertain a motion if we want to push forward and motion that to approve. We got a motion and a second to approve this uh, 101 F uh, 12 FB shares phone server. Uh, all those in favor, let me know my stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Will nay? 
uh, that comes with a favorable recommendation from budget. Um, you next. 101.13 FB. <clears throat> Unfortunately, health insurance premiums usually is always the case. They're going up. Um, still an unassigned fund balance for all. Got a motion to approve. Second. Motion second as well. Uh, all those in favor, let me know by stating aye. Aye. Uh, Any with nay. Motion is approved by budget and finance to move forward. 10114 zoning codes consulting service. Um, I think uh, I asked Mr. Thomas here from planning, this is coming from planning, um, what uh, this might be entailing. Uh, I will give Mr. Thomas a chance here to uh, uh, discuss if I mention anything incorrectly here. I was told uh, this is. Um, uh, some money that was put in place prior to COVID for a master plan. I think $20,000 were put into a plan for the county uh, by the commission to come up with a county master plan. Uh, that money has been sitting there and nothing has moved on that uh, dollar amount. Uh, therefore, um, uh, planning is looking at hiring uh, Mr. Rick Gregory um, as a consultant to uh, look through, if I, if I understand this correctly, to look through the codes for trials of county, we have the original county zones and the city zones, two separate pieces, and try to bring in one set of codes for the county. Uh, did I mention that correctly? Yes, yeah, so what, we, what we've been looking at for several years um, from the planning side of things is when we became a metro, everything was just left the way it was pre-metro, and they just said, okay, Everything that here, all right, that's just going to move forward. But nothing's been done to sew any of that together now that we're a metro. And so what we're looking at doing is instead of, well, one, codes and zoning, we don't have the time in a meeting to do this on our own. Um, we can help with the guidelines and we can help, planning can help us. Um, but GNRC won't take this on without charging us extra. They took on the grand plan idea with us several years back. We put the money up for it. We got no results out of that. Um, they billed, Amy was a little over $3,000 out of that um, for organizational and trying to get things going. And then it just went dead. And we've gotten no results out of that at all. So that contract pretty much has just died on the vine. So we didn't want to go back to GNRC to get help from them, pay extra money for that. When the last time we did, we got no results. Rick Gregory is a, um, he helped with the zoning regulations in Wilson County. Um, he was our advisor for GNRC for planning for many years. When he came and met with Jack and I to even discuss what this would cost us, he brought in his own copy of Crowsdale County Codes and Zonings with all his pages tabbed, all the notes already made over the years of the issues that need to be fixed. He already has all that information that he possesses. Um, I was really impressed that he held on to all that because it's been four, maybe five years since he worked with us. Um, he did this for um, Ashland City and did this for Marshall County, or is in the process of doing Marshall Counties. So he's very experienced with it. Um, this would help clean up our uh, zoning ordinances. Right now, you've got the, the county reads as resolutions. The city, the old city reads as ordinances. Uh, so the wordings need to be changed. Um, it also helped point out any holes in our zone that as we've gotten larger, um, Things have gotten ignored, things have been kicked down the can, you know, kicked down the road, and now this will help. As all this comes together as one document, it'll make it easier to see where those gaps are that we can fill in. Instead of waiting for something to come in that we didn't plan on, not having anything to regulate it, and now we're stuck having to put out a fire. So I'm personally just tired of being on a planning commission without having a full you know, idea of the plan of how our zoning is going to work. The idea coming out of codes and zoning's last meeting was once we 
get this project done, which could easily be done within you know this calendar year, then look at talking to him about him working with us and coming up with a zoning plan. If you'll notice um, between first readings and second readings, just on this meeting alone, the amount of rezonings that we have, A1s going to R1s, um, we need to start getting this stuff in place. We are slowly being changed, whether you want it to or not, from an agricultural county to a residential county. And you see this change in that? No. It's just, it's just coming more and more. I mean, even uh, Mr. Beasley going up 141, he's taken all his, used to be agricultural property, it's all R1 up through there now. We're at hundreds and hundreds of acres now of just R1s. Um, and we, like I said, every month, we bring in more to you guys, two, three, sometimes as many as five, but he's only, no one's taken R1s to agricultural. Everyone's taken agricultural to R1. So we have to start looking at things in a little different manner. Uh, we had a, an incident that came up, and just as an example, if you will, Mr. Chairman, um, a gentleman having a, I guess he's a little over a five-acre lot um, in a subdivision, He uh, his neighbors are wanting him to maintain his one five-acre lot. Um, well, in an agricultural setting, he wouldn't have to maintain it. He could let it grow up, use it for food plots and whatnot, and he could hunt on it, no, no problem. But because it's residential, because it's in the subdivision, he has to keep all the grass down below a foot on five acres, um, even though it's undeveloped. And so it's just one of those things that we're starting to see things, neighbors getting closer and closer with neighbors. You get into a spat with your neighbor and then you start looking at zoning laws and saying, okay, well, I can, I can cause him aggravation with this. And so we're starting to run into those issues. It'd be nice to be able to have a clear view, have the public have everything online. You can see what your zoning stuff is. So that when you buy a property, you know what you're, you're getting. And some of the stuff's not being enforced. And so hopefully we can get some of the enforcement going too. I think we're getting off track here with that. Though. That's the problem. Most of right there is, I don't think this really is enforcement. My point is we've got to get it cleaned up <clears throat> first, make it clear and concise. Let's move we'll uh, start. forward. We're not. We're not there. Yep. That's that's not for budget. That's a different conversation for a different place. But that's the purpose of of doing this consulting to get it done right. So as we uh, as we look at this piece, um, I'll put it here. Yes, sir. Just one other quick question: the contract that we have with GNRC is it has been stale? Or is it void? There is a this, there was this a new contract contradict or open the door for recourse from GNRC. Not a bit. Mm -hmm. We have our, we have a current planning contract with GNRC for planning services that are current. She attends the planning commission and the BZA meetings, and that is separate from this strategic plan uh, contract that was in fiscal year twenty one. And that is what we're taking the money from. That has been sitting in accounts payable for a good two years now. So the two were separate ideas. I appreciate you asking. That was a question myself. I was concerning there. Um, Mr. Beller here seems to be shaking his head that uh, what Ms. Amy is saying would be incorrect point of things. Let me, let, me, let me also point out that, that Mr. Gregory helped us write the zoning and the codes for the, uh, for the solar panels. Did charge the same thing. The only reason that 11,000 figure in there is cut off. He told us both that he didn't think that it would spend that, he would spend that much money. He thought he could handle it in the point of time, fairly quick time with a short number of years. <clears throat> Understood. As we see what we've got here in this case, he thinks he's, I think if, as we look at it in our tonight, he's got a $75 per hour. And we're going to look at that in uh, a later piece here. I'm not part of budget, but this is what's funding that $75 per hour is what we're really looking at. Um, any action from budget? I'll entertain a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. I have a second. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor, let it be known by stating aye. Uh, any opposed with a nay? <clears throat> Um, 
moving on to the uh, 101.15 R. Must be out of place here somewhere. That resolution goes That's to the, the previous. The back of the um, <clears throat> I apologize for that. Um, 101.15 R, Senior Citizen Reserves, um, Building Improvements and Vehicle Maintenance and Repairs. Um, I do not know what those building improvements are myself. I have not heard those. She's wanting to put cubicles. So this is inside the building? Uh, yes. So she uh, has additional floor costs. The quote that we, we approved a budget amendment last month for flooring. Uh, there's additional costs because that quote was old. So, of course, costs have gone up like everything else. And uh, so that's 6000 for flooring and 500 for cubicles. And that's the 6500 for the building improvements. What are, does anyone know, just a question, on these cubicles? What are these cubicles on the cubicles? I don't know specifics. I think she's just trying to separate desks that she has in there. But I I don't know for sure. I think it's something that you ask a question there, what their purpose is behind them, something we can definitely look into between now and Next week to hopefully get an answer on that piece as well. Wouldn't help us here in budget tonight, but would be a question that. Um, uh, <clears throat> The majority of this money is still going into flooring, as you will notice. Um, I'll make it, we have a motion to approve from budget. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this through budget. All those in favor? Uh, I'll ask first off any more discussion on that. All those in favor, let me know my stating aye. Any opposed by nay? It is approved with a favorable recommendation from the budget. Uh, 101.16 election cleanup. And you can see pretty well here what, what is stated. <clears throat> Newspaper charges and legal fees notices have increased. What has not increased this year? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. And a second. Mr. Gregory, any discussion further? All those in favor, let it be known by stating aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed with a nay? Motion is approved. Uh, 10117 County Clerk Chairs. Um, <clears throat> does this. Uh, I might, I would ask one question here. Is this due to that office moving? It, it has a lot to do with that office moving. These chairs are a taller chair. Um, they're still task chairs, but they will reach the counter that they're moving over to the water department. Well, the whole water department. So your, your county clerk's going to move there and have that drive through area. So that's kind of the reason behind this move. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. I have a motion and second to approve this uh, 101.17 uh, slash 17. <clears throat> All those in favor, let it be known by stating it. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hey, if we can, can we keep the conversations in the back down, please? Can we keep conversations in the back down where we gear up here, please? Thank you. Um, the next one we had quite a bit of discussion on a few minutes ago. Uh, in that EMS overtime piece. Um, as you will see, we've had that discussion. Uh, Mayor McCall stated that Mr. Beatty is definitely knows this is an issue at this point and is trying to look at solutions. Um, you have a amendment uh, to the budget here in front of you where we are looking to transfer $20,220 to ambulance overtime, uh, which Inside that has other a cost, as we were talking about the PRN earlier, 
uh, you don't have those uh, benefits costs there in this case, but those are going to be a part of this as well. Uh, there's also a $5,000 contract with private agencies. <clears throat> We've uh, had quite a bit of discussion here on this piece, and we do know that this is a, a motion that appears to be, I mean, a, a, a amendment that appears to be before us today. I just want to ask the uh, mayor, can he give you any reconciliation on this or anything to try to make this better? Yeah. Is that one? Do we know what these private agencies are? Can I do not know at this time, but I can. I believe it's the software that they use. And so it's just the, the cost increase from the budget time. So I'm just then funding over there to cover it. Um, you will notice the EMT course, the two drivers that went through that EMT course have now moved. Uh, do have an EMT piece there for him. And so that is moving, part of this money is being moved or all of this is being moved from 147 to the 187 line item. Any other discussion? I'll make a motion to approve it. I have a motion to I'll approve. Make a motion to approve. Well, make a motion to approve. We have a motion at this point to approve uh, 11801 EMS overtime. Do I hear a second on that motion? Do I hear a second? I hear a second on that motion. Yeah. I'm going to ask the question, Mr. Butler, next. Uh, um, where does that go next? <laughs> it would just go with an unfavorable recommendation. Correct. It can leave us with an unfavorable recommendation if that's what it has to do. Here, we're not saying this is going to happen. The commission will have that statement on whether it happens or doesn't happen, but it would leave here with a favorable or unfavorable recommendation is where we would sit. So we have a motion and a second. Is that correct? <clears throat> um, all those in favor uh, at this point, uh, let it be known by stating uh, I. Uh, uh, all those against by nay. Motion approves. Um, we got a cleanup here on the highway. I think we can take the next. Next, is that correct? We can really look at the next two to go. I believe. Um, I would like to see that different thing, sir. Uh, we got one thirty one oh two cleanup here in this case. You might remember most of the highway department's fund is really passed through money. I think our county funds, are, you know, a hundred thousand, a little over as of our money, county's money. The rest of that the majority of their money comes from gasoline taxes. Where they right. well, what can it is other part over here is always way below. So I'm going to make a motion with the program. Right. It runs a very good budget. We have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor, let it be known by stating aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Uh, the next two we can take together, 141 here and 141 are both. So we can look at these two together if you wish. If you want to pull them separate, I don't mind that either. The U-Trust piece is, uh, as you'll see, there's a, a large, the majority of that money is going towards the summer camp piece. I don't know if you've had any students uh, attend that summer camp piece, but it, those uh, fun, those pieces are a lot of the incentives that you've heard uh, students leave. They're really enjoying it. I'll put my own say on that when I have been the principal of that the last two years it's been, been there. Uh, it's been a successful piece to get kids to come to school and have fun in the summer. That's a tough balance to, to try to uh, make happen. Motion to Got a motion to approve both in a second. Um, any other questions on these or discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor, let me know by stating aye. Uh, uh, any opposed by nay? It does have a favorable uh, movement from budget. Uh, your last page here, you'll see the um, ARPA balances. As of now, there's that 1.6 million I discussed earlier. 
when I said that would be part of that that Mr. Ford brought up in terms of a really nice fund balance the county has seen. Uh, don't forget there's one point, nearly 1.7 million uh, sitting there. And that it, those are unallocated funds. They're floating. They are gaining interest to be able to so Hopefully they'll gain part of that interest we're losing on our other side of things in terms of interest rates on loans. And maybe it'll be a wash. Um, any public comments? We have a motion to adjourn and a second. Uh, all those in favor, let me know my fading eye. Uh, we are adjourned. I appreciate your cooperation.